Hey, this is Chuck, and you are listening to Fans with Bands, the podcast where we talk to the fans and the bands they dig about life, music, and whatever the hell else we want to talk about. Today on Fans with Bands, we're talking to Stonecutters. Check it out. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Fret Rescue. Located in Southeast Michigan, Joe at Fret Rescue has over 17 years of experience as a journeyman luthier. From basic setup to major repairs and restorations, you can put your trust in Fret Rescue. Contact Fret Rescue via email at fretrescue at gmail.com. You can also find them on social media by searching for Fret Rescue. At sign F E R T R E S C U E. That's Fret Rescue. Hey, this is Chuck with Fans with Bands, and I'm talking to Brian from Stonecutters. Brian, how you doing? Hey, hey, great. Awesome, good, man. Good. Awesome. Uh, I had to go look back at my uh, photos because I was like, when is the first time I saw Stonecutters? And it was at the uh, Full Terror Assault in 2016. So it was like the very oh, first Full that Terror. One? Yeah, yeah. I was doing I some think? photography with uh, National Rock Review. Wow. Do yeah. you remember if we played the big stage or the small stage? We played there twice. On yeah, you were on the big stage. stage. You were in the big yeah. stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. That was a good year. Both, yeah. both were great, actually. But yeah, I, I, I loved playing full terror assault <laughs> both times. Yeah, it's always, always a blast. It, so I yeah, I think it was Sacred Reich. Sacred Reich played that year. That was the big stage too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Sacred Reich. Yeah, yeah. They had, they had a, their original drummer. I remember. Yeah. I can't remember his name right now, but they had the, the original drummer. Now they've got Dave McLean back and stuff. But yeah, yeah, that was a blast. Yeah, it so was. Pictures. <laughs> you might have taken the pictures I had from that show. <laughs> I actually, I actually didn't know you were there, huh? That's oh, awesome. That, they're wild. Yeah. So yeah, I was looking back and I was thinking, uh, you know, I just remember seeing you guys and like was totally impressed, you know, by the heaviness of the band and um, sweet. So then when I saw you were going to be at OIGS, you know, this year at KZU, I was like, I got to talk to you about being on the podcast. And you said, yeah, sure. That sounds awesome. So thank you so yeah, much. I appreciate you having me. It's great. Yeah. So I like to kind of start off with like the origin story. So how did you get into music? And then how did the Stonecutters come to be? You know, Stonecutters have been together, it's been about 18 years. Wow. Awesome. Um, we started around 05, 06. And before Stonecutters, I was in, I mentioned it when we were chatting just a minute ago, but I was in this um, hardcore band on Century Media called My Own Victim. And we put out like seven albums. Holy crap. And I, I did that. We went to Europe with um, Biohazard and Slapshot, Marauder. And all these um, Century Media bands and stuff. We went over three yeah. times. Nice. Mucky, Mucky Pup. I really liked them a lot. We, that was our first tour over there. But um, yeah, that was like in the, all in the 90s. And then um, around 05, 06, I decided I, w I was kind of starting to really write the lyrics anyway. So I felt like I wanted to just do the vocals too. Oh, and I, cool. I just started trying it out and just... I mean, I'm no Rob Halford at all. I'm kind of, kind of the opposite. I'm pretty, pretty pukey vocal, vocal style, but that's, you know, that's what I wanted to go for. You know, I always like Blaine from The Accused and um, yeah, just that John Tardy obituary that yeah, for kind sure. of pukey, pukey vocal style and kind of do it my way, make yeah. it my own style. And when I was kind of writing the riffs and the songs, I felt where the vocals should go and and they kind of flowed out of me and the lyrics. And I don't know, we're about six, we're six albums in with Stonecutters now. Nice. So it's, it's been a, it's been a run for 18 years now. <laughs> That's uh, awesome, man. Yeah. Fantastic. It's been a while since COVID, you know, I got, I guess maybe had slowed it down a bit. Um, but, you know, mainly really like we're going down the road some, but we love like recording and our, um, our other guitar player, Chris, has, has a studio built in oh. his basement. So we just record at home with him. Nice. And um, we've already been kind of messing around with some new songs and stuff. And we just put out Eye of the Skull late last year. But um, we're hoping to maybe put out some some little EP or something here soon. Just kind of keep it active. 
Awesome, man. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, speaking of Eye of the Skull, I, I, I love that album. I've got the vinyl. Killer. I thought it was yeah. Fan, it's fantastic, man. Um, it's got the death, the death cover on there. And yeah, all. yeah. I was going to say, when you, were, when you were talking about your vocals, I, I kind of so, think you sound a little bit like Chuck. I mean, wow. you, you have I that kind of that. Uh, attack that he has. I'm a big fan, you know, of, of really of all the all of the, the death albums. Um, I got to see them on spirit. No, I'm sorry, human and individual thought patterns. Yeah. And I actually met Chuck and got his autograph. And basically oh, really? I just told him. Yeah, <laughs> I just told him he's awesome and great. And I, really, I love him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he, he just kind of laughed and was appreciative and signed my stuff. And I was a little like 15 year old kid at the time. <laughs> But um, <laughs> he's. I've always looked up to him. I, I feel like we're a little more punkier, and um, I don't know. He, you know, they got quite a bit more technical and kind of changed oh, it up. Oh, for sure, especially on Human. I mean, that's yeah, especially kind of... Human, which I love. Like I said, I love them all. But um, big fan of Leprosy and Spiritual Healing. Those yeah. two, I felt like, really kind of captured the death metal sound and death and. Yeah. You know, I respect them, Chuck doing his own thing, adventuring out and experimenting, and right. it turned out awesome. But I, something about leprosy and spiritual healing it was yeah. kind of my favorites. Yeah, it's kind of got that raw rawness, the edge. Got yeah. that early, just that was the game changer, I yeah. guess. You know, <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> and he, he, he definitely kept upping the ante. You know, I mean, he's um, had all the skilled musicians and stuff, but. Just that classic death metal sound to me was leprosy and spiritual healing. And yeah, we did within the mind. Yeah, off yeah. spiritual healing on the on the new one. Yeah, so fantastic. he's a bit of a I'd say he's a bit of an influence, but um, you know we have our own thing going on too. I feel like so. Oh, for sure. I don't want to I don't want to copy death, <laughs> but um, except for the cover, you know. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So what's your uh? I, I know it's a tough question, but what would be your favorite cut off the the new album and and why um you know i, I have this just, just <laughs> excellent <laughs> uh, i was like hey, if we're gonna do this i gotta at least show the the cd yeah. cover you know it's on That's vinyl right. and and cassette we did all three formats um you know it's weird worms will feast is getting all the plays on spotify i do like that song um brittle chains i thought turned out really good one of us is a tribute to the movie Freaks, oh, cool. the the nineteen thirties Todd Browning movie. Yeah. Each album, I try to do one song that's a tribute to early early horror cinema. Oh. The old uh, black and whites, like Borderlack was a tribute to the movie Black Sabbath, and um, Sign of the Pentagram was a tribute to Lon Chaney Jr. Werewolf, uh, the Wolf Man. So one of us is a tribute to Freaks, and I thought that one turned out really good. And really, I like the title track. I I think yeah, I have that, the it's That's that's probably my favorite right there. Killer, yeah. yeah. It's you know it it does get fast, but this album I feel like it is it's got it's doomier kind of slow heavy moments for sure. Yeah, and the, um, this, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, yeah. and it, but still has those kind of killer riffs that you guys are. Uh, I feel like yeah. stone cutters are known for is that really great. Um, there's a great, powerful rhythm, you know. But then they, those riffs that you guys come up with are just crushing. And I We're think pretty this one still has it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's I really like awesome. It. Yeah, I do. I do focus it around a good riff a lot of times. I'll try to, you know, as soon as I come across something from playing and practicing i'll just kind of go from there and then i'll yeah. i have like song titles in my phone and written down that i think would fit over it and it just kind of flows like that nice nice which is, which is a just a good thing you know all, all of our albums are a bit different but yes yeah, so it's something something special about this one i think the riffs and all turned out yeah did you turned out great did you intentionally try to make any changes on this album um just to varied up or was it just how things flow well you know it it was um you know it was written during like covid really okay so everybody was kind of sitting at home including myself and um i had a lot on my mind there was a, there was a lot going on in the world with with me 
And I think it kind of shows with songs like The Search for Rest. Um, it's kind of about how we're just in a in a in a fucked up situation. Yeah. The world and how the world is and my life and how how it's um that's just we, we may just be stuck here <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> that's how I kind of put it out there. Right. Really. But um, I don't know. Each song is different and different subject matter, so it it does vary. Yeah. Um, and it I don't know. It felt like it was just dark, and it it gets pretty doomy and slow on a lot of it. I like to write some slow, kind of crushing riffs. I hope to yeah. call them. Yeah. I like to call them. And uh, I don't know. I've been writing some kind of faster stuff for the next one, and <laughs> that's going to be on down the line. But yeah. um. This still feels fresh. You know, it's got the instrumental track, Planet Chaos, which which that song actually was written 30 years ago when oh, the shit. drummer and I, the drummer and I have been playing together since high school. Wow. And then we wrote that song on an old demo we had. And we always liked it. And then we just kind of re-recorded it and put some solos and some samples in there and kept the name, Planet Chaos. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and um, threw it towards the end of the album, kind of like little Orion. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing, you know, kind of second, it's second to the last song, like Orion, and just yeah. fits there. And, I, I like a good yeah. uh, instrumental thrown in the mix, you know, just to kind of change things up, you know. We do that on every every other album or so. We'll just have an instrumental. I just like, I don't need to sing over this. I can right. Just let yeah. It, just let it let jam. It breathe. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. What's the songwriting process like for you guys? Do you uh, um, do you guys get together like kind of old school jam and come up with shit, or is it somebody has a fully formed idea or partial idea and then brings it to the band? And you guys kind of hone it. Well, I do. I do write most of the songs. I have to admit, um, I come in there usually pretty prepared. Um, the drummer Johnny and I we're kind of James Hetfield, Lars Ulrich, it a bit. Yeah. And him and I will jam quite a bit. And then um, Chris, though, I, I know discrediting the other two guys because Chris adds all this spicing on the cake with it. Plus, yeah. he records us. <laughs> so he can, like, sit in there on his own and, like, hey, I put this over. And I'll be like, damn, that's excellent. <laughs> idea. Right. You know? Spices it up a bit. And same with bass, bass player Jace. Now, Jace, our bass player, he's kind of more of a guitar player, but He's, he rules. He, he 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 can play bass too. I can play bass. So yeah. But I wanted I wanted an actual bass player on there, and he's he um he really added a lot of flavor and kind of bass solos on parts, you know, and really does what I what I hope, you know. Nice. Nice. He's a bit of the younger kid in the band, and he, <laughs> he's hungry and great, and it 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 definitely takes all four of us. Yeah. That's but, cool. But um. I do come in there with whole songs a lot of times, but we'll tweak them for sure. Yeah. yeah. I guess some of the way, I guess, Chuck Schildner, Beth, you know, I'm sure he kind of yeah, primary song. I have a feeling that he was like the primary. Well, I know I'm, from what I read, he was, right? I mean. Right. Well, like, I guess in Spiritual Healing, like James Murphy's credited with him with like a song or two. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Rick Ross, I think, on Leprosy. I think he yeah. helped write a bit and, but and who was that for the most part who was that guitar player that ended up going into cynic um um sean uh, john reinhardt was the drummer and oh gosh paul masvidal yeah and, yeah Pas it, paul yeah. masvidal yeah because he was on human uh -huh. i think i think but, yes yeah yeah he was both of them yeah the yeah. cynic guys i guess we lost sean reinhardt kind of yep yeah. a year or two ago maybe two or three years now yeah but um, gosh, man, what an incredible drummer! Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. So he kind of brought the speed up in that band. But go oh, ahead. I know. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say. Kinda... Um, yeah, that guy was incredible, and it's uh, you know, it's kind of cool that we. I mean, I feel sort of privileged to be, um, you know, my age because I've been able to see all that shit. You know, same. Like experience it. I think we I think we mentioned it before we started the interview, but um, I saw Def on individual thought patterns and human. 
and uh, I was telling you, I got to meet Chuck. Yeah. And um, I was like 15 year old kid, and he was he was awesome. <laughs> and, um, just kind of stroked his ego, and he laughed, and then yeah. just told me he's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, long time fan. Yeah, I always uh, I like other stuff too, but yeah, I've always struggled with uh, talking to people that I admire, you know, in a band. Um, just I don't know. I like become tongue tied when I'm like all I can say is like, Oh, you're awesome, dude. You know, as opposed to like having some kind of meaningful conversation. Although I'm sure it's hard. I mean, cause you've probably run into this where people come up and say, Hey man, you're awesome. But then you're like, you really don't know each other. So you're not going to really say, you know, how the fuck are, are you doing? And all this shit, you're not really going to get into really? a conversation, but. <laughs> right. That's why really, if I'm a big fan, I'll just be like, man, you're, I love this album and this song and what you do. And yeah. You know, make them feel good about what they do. Yeah. You know, that's always kind of seems to be the right thing to, to say instead of, hey, do you know so and so? You know, <laughs> right. Be like, ah. <laughs> or hand them your they tape. Got, <laughs> hey, here's right, my band. Right. <laughs> they've, got a, they've got a million things going on, you know? Right. So. Right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, a little gesture is always, they always, people usually appreciate that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, uh, when, when did you get started? Like, what was the inspiration for you to want to play music? Um, you know, I started playing guitar when I was about 10 years old and I just never stopped. Um, my brother and I were kind of competitive and he started, he's, my brother's pretty good guitar player and, um, I wanted to be better than him. Kind of like, <laughs> you know, it's a sport or something, right, you know, right, right. I wanted to. You know, I think a lot of it, to get a little deep, uh, my father passed away when I was 11. Oh, man. And um, he was he was murdered along with his date. It's kind oh, of a long shit. story. But it was a sudden thing. It was very traumatic for me. And um, it was hard to get through. And really, I feel like music and guitar and just, it really helped me. And I, I really buckled down and and was feeling strong emotions um, during that as a childhood, not having my dad around anymore. And I took it pretty hard. And um, I just kind of let it all out in the, in the songs and stuff. And um, you know, not that we're any kind of emo band. Right. But, um, you know, that I kind of like, I grasp like, I mean, like Neurosis and just heavy bands like that. They were really in intense. Um, and I, I just grabbed onto music. And um, I mean, really, I was I was kind of a big Billy Squire fan before that. And when I was like eight, <laughs> eight <Excellent>. nine, <laughs> you know, he was like the first guy, yeah. the stroke and everybody wants you. I'm going <laughs> back here. <Yeah. laughs> but um, I was into that. I know the Rock Me Tonight video. <laughs> kind of kind of hurt his career obviously but i don't know i just liked his albums and you know i was in a rat and you know they had killer oh, yeah. guitar players yeah warren um, martini man warren d martini and george lynch those two specifically yeah. I, I loved their guitar playing how fast they were and how yeah. raunchy and killer their riffs and solos were but, you know, then I started getting into more into, like, I discovered Metallica and Slayer and then Death. And it just kind of, na then Napalm Death and, <laughs> you know, and it kind of like, I wanted to go deeper and deeper. Right. And kind of get weirder and weirder. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've been listening to the, the Mr. Bongle and. Oh, yeah. Cause I, did, I just saw him with Dave Lombardo and. Um, I mean, I'm all over the board, really. I like Nick Cave and Agents of Oblivion, and I, I mean, I don't even know where to where to begin <laughs> on. But I'm pretty right. diehard metal guy. Yeah. Um, I was into hardcore a lot. Um, in my early 20s, when I was doing My Own Victim, our early band, mm -hmm. and it was just kind of like, I don't, I don't know, I was really into sick of it all, Agnostic Front, right? Those bands, and um. We actually toured with Slapshot, like I was saying, Slapshot and Marauder, and and um, 
but then with the stone cutters thing i was kind of getting into i wanted to take it more like maiden meets i hate god meets <laughs> obituary <laughs> or whatever you know yeah, i just kind of yeah. wanted to get doomier and faster at the same time and just kind of take it to a different another level nice so here we are you know <laughs> It's been kind of a long road. It's been like 30 years, 30 plus years of me doing this. So. Yeah, man. That's awesome. That's really awesome. So what Apparently, keep... we played some shows together at Milwaukee Metal Fest. May... Now, so. Well, yeah, maybe. Cause, yeah, we were, we were talking before because I was in a, uh, you know, I don't know if. You were in Battalion? Yeah, Battalion. But I don't know if we were, I don't know what kind of, you know, there's always the genre to put on a, a band. I don't know exactly what we were, really. We were sort of like uh i don't know like uh metal thrash? church yeah but okay not, but not quite thrashy but then i know that our uh our bass player uh really wanted to get into he was huge into obituary so mm -hmm. we had some like death uh um you know backing vocals on a few songs like later um and i was really into forbidden so i wanted Sweet. to get Me too. More, more technical um but we never really quite got there, but, uh, but we did it for like uh, six years, I think. Um, but yeah, it sounds like we, we might have been at the same Milwaukee Metal Fest. I think it was 90, yeah. 94. Um, that sounds right. Yeah. And yeah. that's right when we signed to Century Media. We put out six albums on Century Media. Seven. Uh, I'm sorry. Four on Century Media, and then we, we kept going after that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta grab that yeah, well, program. I've got the program downstairs. I gotta look. I'm gonna have to look at it after we talk to see, because I could. Sw the The name of your band sounds so familiar, and and I'm kind of crossing it up because I went to Metal Fest a few times, and and one I didn't play, um, and uh, I saw DRI and Cannibal Corpse, and um, as we were talking, like Slayer was on that day that we played. Uh, they obviously played much later like uh, yeah they were that was a big a big deal uh, yeah. <laughs> I think, i'm pretty sure it was the first show with um paul bailoff paul paul bostoff, paul bostoff? I mean, yeah paul bostoff uh-huh who had been in for me <laughs> yeah that's that's yeah. true <laughs> yeah i remember meeting um sammy duet because he was because i'm acid bath play because i remember hanging out with sammy and meeting him we were we always, we'd talk about that so yeah. uh, and see him with Goat Whore now. And uh, did, so, Aunt, did Anna Cruces play that show? I can't remember. That sounds familiar. I think they might have. I know I got, uh, so, uh, and again, I, I crossed them because one year I went and I was just, you know, hanging out watching the bands and ended up drinking a bunch of beers. And then somebody said, like, one of the bands was like, you know, somebody want to play guitar. And so I jumped up on stage and I played like solo with these guys. I can't remember who they were, though. Oh wow! Because <laughs> they were like they were just figuring it was just going to be some idiot that didn't know how to play, and then, and not that I'm a fucking great guitar player, but uh, got up there and played with them. Uh, and then the other time when we did play, uh, I dropped acid afterwards, and fuck, but, I, like half of that I don't remember what's going on. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty intense. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Sounds like it. <laughs> You know, you mentioned o obituary. I've actually gotten to open for them at least twice. Maybe awesome. it might be three times. Awesome. Yeah, and that yeah. one was one was with gruesome and obituary, and the other one was with unleashed and obituary. Nice. And those two were. Um, I don't know. I'm a big fan. So that was that was fun. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. you like, what would be like a highlight so far of your musical career in terms of playing. The Guar shows were always really good. <laughs> we got to do about four or five Guar shows. Um, we did about the same with Goat Whore. We got nice. to do a few with Goat Whore. Um, played a couple of shows with Macabre. was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. I like those guys a lot. We, I saw them at this last Milwaukee Meadow Fest, and we got to catch up. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. And I like the, the Ringworm. We played with Ringworm a few times, and... Those guys are, are good. Yeah. I Did, like them uh, a lot. I'm thinking of Berserker because that's where I saw first saw um, Macabre and uh, also uh, Ringworm, I think. Mm hmm Yeah. 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 Crazy, man. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, we did a couple of Berserkers. Those were a lot of fun. 
I really like the we played Guarbecue. Um I think it was the first year with Blothar. It was right after Rocky had passed away. We played that year. Oh man, it was so much fun. That was like Go Horror, but I think it was Body Count, Chromax. Oh man. <laughs> I mean it was go it was on and on. Clutch. Um it was crazy. It was yeah. crazy. It was awesome. A, excellent. So so you've been, and you know, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. You were going. We've done a, done a lot of touring on our own too. Like yeah. a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, like I was saying, like uh, post COVID here, it's just, we're going out. I, I figured you might mention it. We're going to go out in August Yeah. for, with um, Cavalcade and uh, the Mound Builders. Nice. Um, so, I mean, we're kind of itching to, to get out there and, and play some more after we did the fest. You saw us at Oigs Fest, yeah, which was a blast. Um, kind of makes me want to start start doing it again. We played Chicago um, right before Oigs Fest, and it was great. So I'm like, man, I'm, you know, people want to people want to still see us. Yeah, hell yeah, you know? I can, yeah. So, uh, well, so how did the uh, the 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 mini tour with uh, those guys come about? Did you just Hook up with, Mound uh, Builders. Cap- I don't know oh, if you're really? familiar with Mound Builders. Yeah, I think they played Full Terror the same time that you guys did in 2016. Probably, yeah, yeah. Because uh, they, they're from Lafayette, Indiana. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we played with them off and on for for a long for years now, and I know James the singer, um, and he brought it up, and he mentioned Cavalcade. And we go way back with both bands. Nice. Um, Cavalcade has gotten a sh- shows at Max for since we started. <laughs> so I don't know if you if you ever been to Max and Lansing. Yeah, yeah, I made it to uh, Oigs. What was it? Uh, right before COVID. It might have been Ogre Fest. Then they changed the yeah. name. Could have been. Could have been Oigs. Still, I, I think it was like in the transition when it had gone from ogre to oig, I think. Right. But, but it was kind of the same thing. Yeah. Right. They just <laughs> renamed it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but those Max shows are always so much fun, and and we just decided to do it. I, I really want to get Cavalcade and Mound Builders a good Louisville show. We're going to finish the tour in Louisville. Nice. And we we always we always draw pretty well here, so we're going to give them a good time. Excellent. We're playing this place called Planet of the Tapes, like Planet of the Apes, but yeah. it's Planet of the Tapes. I saw and that on VH- the poster. <laughs> yeah. It's got like VHS cassettes all over the place and old movie posters and props and masks. And <laughs> I think the Cavalcade guys will get a good kick out of it. They're going to Oh, like yeah. It. Yeah. I, I know that Brad and uh, and Sean are both big horror fans. Oh, oh yeah, and is really, but yeah, yeah, they're gonna <laughs> love this place. We're gonna give them. Last time we played there, we had about two hundred people. Nice. So um, we'll we'll give them a good crowd and a good show. It's on a Saturday night, so it should do well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our hometown yeah. show is always we get a, usually get a few hundred people there if we really get the word out. So it should. This place holds about two hundred, so that'll that'll pack it pretty good. That's cool. So so what so, is the local scene like for you? Um, Louisville. Man, it's really good here in Louisville. Um, Blind Scryer is is the local favorite. I really like this band, Galactic Spectre. They're an instrumental band, and they dress in these crazy, crazy get-up. It's hard to describe. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I love a lot. Ohm, uh, Redivider. Um, everybody's kind of, you know, knocked loose. Yeah. is out of here and they're blowing the fuck up uh they're kind of younger kids they're a little younger generation but they're going out with slipknot and they're, get, they're they're getting pretty big yeah but um the underground metal and metal scene here is you know it's stoner doom thrash we got a little bit of everything here that's awesome so, that's some awesome. good bands I, I'm, I'm proud of our scene here cool cool a lot, a lot of history so, uh, in your musical journey, uh, what would you say would be some of the the most influential albums that you've uh, that were just kind of pivotal in your musical career? Oh wow! Um, there's a local band, King Horse. Um, a lot of people are from 
familiar with him because Glenn Danzig helped him out and got him on Caroline Records and stuff. But they're a local band, and their 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 albums really affected me a lot. Being from here and stuff. Um, gosh, a lot like the Death stuff. I'm a pretty big Iron Maiden fan. Nice. Um, Power Slave, the first up to Seven Sign. I'm just yeah. I think are like. 11 out of 10, I would say, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, <laughs> of course, Priest and the early Metallica. And and um, I don't know, I like a lot of weird underground. There's a lot of European hardcore I like, like Backfire and Rikers. Um, this band Brightside. There's a, these are all Euro, European bands. Uh-huh. Um, I'd almost have to thumb through my collection and even... <laughs> Go through yeah. it all. I love the like I was mentioning. I love the accused. Um, is there any uh, anything that somebody would be surprised at? Like, oh shit, I didn't realize Brian liked X. Hmm. I mean, the Billy Squire thing, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> um, we won't hold it against you, though. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't. Want, I do like. The Black Label Society. That might be a shocker because I, I don't know people are hit and miss on that. But yeah, some people are I like think, super like into Zach Wild, and some people are like fuck that guy. Super but hate him. Super hate I, him. Yeah. I like I like him. Um, you know, I I think he does maybe one or too many, you know, pick harmonics, but whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I appreciate his guitar playing. Um, I like this guy, Andy Timmons. He's just super, um, you know, he started out in this hair metal band, Danger Danger. But he does solo albums. Steve Vai actually uh, puts out his albums. But he's oh. he's from Kentucky. Oh, cool. And um, he's really phenomenal and blowing up and deserves every bit of it. Nice. Um, yeah, Steve Vai's like, you know, big fan of his and puts his music out. And, um, I'll have to check gosh, it out. I, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, I like over. I just went to Milwaukee Metal Fest, and I love Overkill. They yeah. played, and um, and um, gosh, of course, like Anthrax. I'm trying to dig, dig deeper here. I mean, I like Satan, the band Satan, and oh, yeah. King I Diamond. <laughs> I mean, I could just kind of go on and on. Yeah. Did you ever get into uh, like um, melodic death metal or? Uh... Any of the like carcass rock or anything like that? I love carcass. Yeah. yeah. Um trying trying to think here. It's been a long day. And um, <laughs> um you were mentioned was it Ar- Arcturus? Um you know it's weird. I listen to a lot of kind of local stuff and surrounding yeah. area. I mean Indianapolis has got a big scene, right? I dig some flesher. I don't know if you've heard them. Uh-uh. Um, I book these Metal Mondays in oh. Louisville every Monday. But it's, it's been going on for probably nine years. Last night we had Indianapolis band Blasted Heath and a Pittsburgh band Razor Blade. Nice. And they were both awesome. Nice. I, I like going in blind, and, and it always surprises me. You yeah. Know, these, these bands bring it. Um, the week before, we had that Galactic Spectre local band. A lot of touring bands come through and love it because it's it packs out, but it's really become a thing in Louisville. It's really? always good time on a out. Monday, even right? Monday, Mondays <laughs> can be awful on the road. Yeah, and these are always good Mondays. So the bands are like, "Holy shit!" I've had bands tell me it's the best best show of their tours. Wow, well, so, that's um, awesome! It's uh, you it's know, pretty cool. <laughs> it's a little more like playing a party. It's a small room and small stage and small PA, yeah. but people pack in there and they're very receptive That's of cool. the bands. And you know, Stonecutters plays it once every year. And yeah, we had Lich King play. Um, nice, Havoc. I mean, we've had some bigger bands. Yeah, like Havoc. that on those. Havoc. Snafu. A lot of lot of Detroit bands were here. Oh yeah, Snafu. Those guys are awesome. <laughs> um child bites played it uh, against the grain it's played metal monday here yeah. so ton of those, bands those guys are coming back too they've done a couple shows against got, the grain yeah yeah we, they did the some of the guar shows with us 
Oh, that's and right. Then, yeah, because yeah. they toured with Gar, Gar. Yeah, it was like a, a few of them, I believe. A few, a couple at least, were just stone cutters against the grain. Guar. Nice. So it was um, special. You yeah, know? And, <laughs> that's a good lineup. The Guar, yeah, the Guar fans, you know, they they show up early too. They're ready to. Yeah, they're ready to go. <laughs> they want to so, be out front, covered in yeah, the Yeah, we <laughs> we really brought that brought it at those those shows and came out swinging, you know. So we we knew we had to. <laughs> Played awesome. Bogarts in Cincinnati with Warren against the Grain and Iron Reagan. They were on that show too. Oh yeah, Iron yeah, Reagan, that, that, that was a great special. Band. Yeah, that was that was killer. So um, do, you, do you have any uh, pre-show rituals, things you've got to do before you go on stage? I tell you what, um, the past uh, since since COVID and playing back, I haven't been. I stay sober <laughs> because <laughs> I I don't want to I don't want to fuck it up. Right, right. I, I played. I played. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I played drunk. I've you know I played high and on different things, right, you know, right. and uh, I save it till after mm -hmm. because I just want to be on my game and yeah, and just get through it a hundred percent, and then it's you know party on after that, right, right. But um, that's that's been a bit of a ritual. I used to you know get fucked up a bit and yeah. drink some before I play and maybe a beer or two before i play yeah. um but a beer, a beer really might like kind of take the edge off a little bit takes it uh, i think i did at oigs fest because it was an all-day thing I like, yeah, yeah I've gotta, i gotta i gotta get the edge <laughs> off and <laughs> loosen right. up there and that's right we got a few hours before we go on kind yeah of thing. yeah we had a great spot and time at that we played at eight o'clock i yeah. think at oigs fest and I, I had a great crowd that night it was i was really happy with that show and you yeah. were there. So. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I thought. I thought uh, it was, and I thought Brad did a great job of. He always does of getting a mix. You know, that's what I like. Is like, I do too. Um, uh, you know, some variety, something you're not expecting. Like you said, you know, for the Monday, you come in, you you come in, you don't really know, and then the band knocks it out of the park. Um, oh or, man, you know, and it's it's cool. I was turned on to a lot. I didn't, I didn't really think there was a bad band, and they were all so different. Like that Coyote Man. I think oh yeah, called. those guys were awesome. From Chicago, the Cult yeah. of Space Call. I was pretty blown <laughs> away by that. I I've seen but them before, and I was. I they kinda... ended the night. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Pretty wild, and of course, you know, we we played shows with Centenary and yeah. and and Throne is awesome. I really oh, like Throne yeah. for the yeah. for the brutal yeah. death metal stuff. Yeah, so it was it was great. You know, cavalcade, yep. good. Yeah, all, it was all all awesome. Yeah, yeah, every band. He I, does I, great I, with that best. Yeah, that's and like I said, I just love the the variety because I think that's what makes it. You know, not that I'm opposed to like a, um, you know, a full uh, bill that's you know, like all technical death metal or whatever. You know, that's that's right. fun too. But it's cool when you have the kind of somebody to throw you a curve and but it's still yeah. heavy or sounds good you know because not every right. definition of heavy is different right yes i mean look at cavalcade i mean they they're yeah. pretty pretty out there yeah you know? so they're gonna, <laughs> yeah. yeah they're gonna be listening to different stuff besides just straight metal i'm sure yeah i know craig sure. does yeah so usually you know i went to milwaukee metal fest that's pretty much all metal yeah but um but brad and them kind of mix it up i like that yeah yeah for sure yeah so, so is there any Good place times. that you'd like to so and this can is sort of like a fantasy question but if you could play anywhere in the world uh with stone cutters uh where would you like to play and is there bands you'd like to play with man i really wanted to get us get us over to europe like my own victim did man. um I spent six months of my life over there touring and it was um it was i gotta admit those were the best shows of my life over in europe they really they treated us well so good and we were doing big tours where there's a thousand people a night on wow. opening for biohazard over there and yeah and slap shot and all these bands and um you know that was that was early on i, I felt like i kind of was still chasing that 
dream of getting over there and playing to huge crowds and yeah. you know it's it's still the whole ride's been fantastic but i really wanted to get back over to europe i mean i'd still like to um japan as well i've never i never played japan but i always heard how how awesome it is over there they yeah we played some shows with i hate god and they they were talking about it how japan was incredible for them wow um what do you think so, it is yeah. about that like you know europe and like, it just seems like is it just because there's more people that are um into metal it was totally it different like well europe um it was a different ball game where like um we have a lot of security over here i feel like you mm -hmm. know bouncers and getting thrown out and then they'll be between the 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 audience and the band yeah a lot of times i noticed in europe they're right on you they're they're just like have their arms over the stage um they they really don't shove each other around in the pit like they do here oh. which i don't mind that i mean yeah, yeah. You can do whatever they want right but over there they kind of just like they're all kind of like all over each other and they'll jump around kind of pogo a bit and yeah yeah it's the way they react is like um it's different we got we got treated completely different like um the catering was um phenomenal over there we go and there'd be all <laughs> kinds of food and oh man a table and they they're you know what what do you need we're like honestly in the states you're lucky to get a pizza <laughs> You know, right. So uh, I, I, there's big differences. I, I got to admit, um, you know, we got on a bus over in Europe and it was just kind of <laughs> got treated really special over there. That's cool. That's so cool. I, I loved that vibe of it. And we, I don't know, we went all over the place over in Europe and it was um, it was really awesome. In my 20s. Any particular venue <laughs> that you'd like to go back to? That you can think of. Um, we played Milkwood Max in Amsterdam three times. Um, I played London Astoria a couple of times, which is the big place yeah. in London. Yeah. Um, and then we played Rotterdam, Tilburg, um, SO36 in Berlin. But in, in the States, you know, I've also you know, I got to play Bogarts a bunch in Cincinnati, which is the big place. Yeah. Um, a lot of big vendors, the Norva. In Norfolk, we played. We did play New Year's Stonecutters, open for war on New Year's Eve at the Norva, <laughs> and uh, that was in 2019, right before COVID oh, man. shut everything <laughs> down. But we got to do a big war New Year's Eve show, <laughs> and that was with Against the Grain, and I think that was just us three at that show. That was one of the one of the shows. It was just us three. Uh, but yeah, I've gotten to play a lot of a lot of great venues and. Um, I'm, I'm happy with everything. Cool. Um, just, you know, I did, I, I'm thinking now I just, I just turned 50 in April. Oh, you're so a youngster, man. <laughs> it's kind of like, man, I'm not young anymore. Do I want to live in a van? <laughs> you know, I, I keep, I, I, I mentioned this in another interview, but, um, I keep going back to Danny, Danny Lilker from nuclear yeah. assault. You know, I'm talking about, yeah. um, and he just did a stint with anthrax. I remember when he years ago he turned fifty. He's older than that now. Yeah. But he said he's done touring, and I don't know if that's the case with. I don't want to say never say never. Right. Because I'm going out and doing <laughs> little tours here still. Right. Right. But um, but you know, I, I, my attitude's changed a little. I don't feel like I need to um, kill myself doing it like I used to. I used to tour. I toured a lot, um, up until 2020. Right. You know, so um, I've kind of slowed it down. I kind of like that. I kind of like doing things on my terms, our terms, instead of, um, man, we got to live on the road at all times. It, yeah. It, it kind of wore me out a little bit to where I'm like, I like the pace I'm at. That's cool. And um, yeah, Very I love cool. playing fest, honestly, and booking tours around a fest. Yeah. And, you know, just doing it that way you know you're at least going to have one great show yeah 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 because yeah. looking back man i've I, oh god i played some embarrassing <laughs> nobody there shows you know oh, I, and yeah. um <laughs> kind of like kind of like breaking my heart like man i've been doing this a long time <laughs> and there's nobody here right, right. you know that'll kind of it kind of does something to your soul like man what am i doing with my life <laughs> you know <laughs> right so right. 
that's why a little bit feels like less is more at my age yeah that's and cool. um i still want to do it but um yeah we'll see what happens you know i i really like putting out music like i like putting out out of the skull and um i want to put out something new and then i feel like yeah i can go out and push this new thing like I, we're still pushing out of the skull yeah so um i like to have something new a lot of times and new music and that well, way think, it feels fresh yeah i think it's a good approach to take you know to like you know not have to kill yourself necessarily um like you said live in a van or whatever um, it got a little unenjoyable yeah at times, you know yeah. i just I, now when i go out i'm like stoked you yeah. know and you know, i do have a wife at home and right. um you know and i love her and miss her and i remember chuck Schildner didn't want to go on tours because he missed his cats yeah you know so, <laughs> so i mean then well, you know you, you know at the end of the day though you gotta um what you do has to bring you joy if it's not bringing you joy and it's right. a grind or something then there's no fucking point in doing it right exactly exactly i want to go out there and have fun yeah. and um you know get my get my point across and scream in people's faces with our music <laughs> and that too but you know yeah. that's kind of like 30 minutes out of the whole day so it's you know you get up there for that 30 minutes so you know i want to be pumped and excited and yeah not like man there's nobody here and <laughs> right <laughs> I'm, I'm getting bombed that you know <laughs> Yeah. So it's it's become a little bit more um quality over quantity. Oh, that's I cool. Say with me. There's nothing yeah. yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. It's a it's, it's a good approach to take, really. Yeah. Yeah. So uh do you remember uh what was the very first concert you ever went to? Oh God. Um Tina Turner. Really? Awesome. Um, my mom took me to see she was into Tina Turner. And I and me me too. I saw her on the private dancer. Oh cool. Tour. Awesome. And then I, that was in, oh, that was like middle school. And then I saw Genesis. Nice. And then it was um, two different concerts. But then I saw Bon Jovi and Poison. You got, you got to think I was like 13, 14. And yeah. there were, Bon Jovi was one of Dead or Alive was a big hit. And I think I went with my older brother. Cool. So, but then I started going into like death metal and thrash shows. I saw Clash of the Titans. Oh Sand yeah, Tracks that was great. Megadeth, Alice yeah. in Chains open. That was awesome. That is still to the day one of my favorite concerts ever. Just I were, were people being assholes uh, to Alice in Chains at the show? Because when I went to, the, to see that, I was kind of liked Alice in Chains. I mean, I had only heard like maybe one song, um, which I think was "Man of the Box." Um, mm -hmm. So I saw them, and I was like, I was ready to see them. There was hardly anybody there, and then the few people that were there. You know, like some of them were like, you know, get the fuck off the stage. And I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, I thought they were good, but. I heard that, but um, I caught like the last song, unfortunately. Maybe two songs at the yeah. end. And I couldn't really tell. It seemed like they were kind of kicking ass. Yeah. Well, really, they like, kicked ass. Like I mean, it. yeah. Well, they're, those fuckers get the, yeah. I thought they, they were they were awesome. As soon as the second band Anthrax came on, those the pit erupted and it was <laughs> yeah. on for the rest of the night. Right. But right. um I'm sure that was a crazy wild crowd for Alice in Chains. Yeah. I think around the same time I saw the Headbangers Ball tour, which was Anthrax, Halloween, and Exodus. Oh, cool. And that was a really that was a good game changer. So I, I kind of dove into Thrash then and then Death Metal and I saw Napalm Death a bunch and yeah. obituary i saw dsi on legion tour and those death shows and yeah i saw a so. death that uh in this little tiny like bar in uh toledo with mm -hmm. uh at the gates opening up for him and it was just oh wow fucking awesome it was so good i was I there bet. mainly to see at the gates because i was a huge at the gates fan um because i had blood uh, of the soul yeah, well, I got That's into you. him with uh, Terminal Spirit Disease, that album right before. Um, and I was like, fuck, this is so good. And then they came out with Slaughter to Soul, and I was like, oh, yeah. It so, was all over. Yeah, I was <laughs> huge. It kind of blew up then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what was the best yeah. concert you've ever been to? What would you rank up there? 
I mean, that Clash of the Titans was um, was very memorable and really um, kind of set me on my journey, I felt like. Nice. Um, I, there's been some Iron Maiden. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little deep here, but there's been a couple of... <laughs> Iron Maiden shows where I kind of got a little teary eyed. It was just nice. I love I love them that much, you know. Yeah, playing healthy yeah. by name, and I'm just like yeah. singing it, like <laughs> feel like I have my life flashing before me or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's a deep kind of intense um in band for me. Yeah, you know? uh, that was yeah. like one of the first heavy bands. Like so, um, I I can still remember like we went. You know, I got into like Judas Priest and, um, but hadn't really listened to like we were listening to, I think, uh, Bruce Steele and got into Ozzy, but had never really listened to like Black Sabbath or Iron Maiden. And we went to the record store, me and my buddy. I bought Black Sabbath's Sabotage, he bought Killers, and mm -hmm. that's what we listened to like constantly. And then we became oh, wow. huge Maiden fans. I mean, like you said, like those up to Seventh Son, I was like, I w went to every show. Um, we saw Maiden open for Thirty Eight Special. Like, damn, uh, are you serious? Wow. Yeah, yeah when they were doing that's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, what was that? Um, Number of the Beast. Um, and then when they holy played, shit <laughs> when they when they toured with uh, uh, Judas Priest and opened for Priest. Um, yeah. That was um, you caught you caught them early on. That's pretty yeah, pretty it was great. yeah, it was great. Yeah, and we we were huh. actually and there was actually a little bit because you know we had been so heavily invested into like Killers and the first album that when we mm -hmm. when they got Bruce we were like ah oh, I kind of and I still sometimes like Diano and some things as you know and I, right. I don't think Bruce can sing some of those songs the right way, um, but I've heard other people say that. <laughs> There's just some, there's like, when Bruce sings like Iron Maiden, I think Diano sang it better, right? Because they do yeah. it in the concert all the time, but yeah. Yeah, I loved, it's, I mean. It is kind of, I like the how he, Bruce sang um, the Klansman and the other one. Um, he sings the the other singer guy that was in Maiden for a little. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, can't remember that dude's name. He he really makes brings. He does that singing. one great. Yeah. Yeah, like man, he should have sang on that song on the album. <laughs> it's like, so, yeah, yeah. It's pretty I, amazing. I, that rock and Rio is one thing of the live rock and Rio. He sings the the other guy, the Clansman, and the other song. It's so good, man. He's yeah. They, but and, yeah, I know what you're saying about the Diano stuff. It's yeah. and, I almost feel like they should be leave those alone. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Well, I love that they still play him. I wish uh, sometimes they'd play like, you know, uh, Genghis Khan or um, mm -hmm. uh, what the fuck was the other Bam. instrumental? Uh, oh, blanking out right now. But, Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love how they do a Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera. Uh, yeah. That's a great song. Uh, yeah, any of those, any yeah. of those early songs. He, he sings that one all right, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I right. love all the Maiden stuff. For, uh, well, uh, when they came back with Brave New World, I really liked that one a lot. I don't know if you checked out Brave New World, but yeah, great and album. I, and I went to check out the last tour, which was good. Um, that the the Legacy of the Beast tour was awesome. The greatest hits, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, they had awesome. the big stage shows and incredible yeah. stage shows. <laughs> We may be getting off subject here, right. but I, I do love the Maiden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we could probably talk about Maiden the whole time. <laughs> I, you know, I I love um. I, there's some early Guar shows I really. Uh, I'm kind of an old school Guar fan. That's awesome. I I, I jumped in the blood early on, and I'm <laughs> a huge Brocky fan and Corey Smoot that passed away, and scum dogs for life, really. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, I'm kind of an ICP juggalo about it. I don't care. <laughs> People hate me for it. You know, it's like, it's, that's my jam. That's it. that's it. I like their music about as much as their stage show. I do jam Battle Maximus and uh, Lust in Space. I just bangers. <laughs> I think they're bangers. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Huge Brocky fan. I do. I do love Brocky. 
a lot. Awesome. Yeah. Well, there, I, there's a Louisville guy, Jameson. He was Beefcake. Really? Um, for um, on Battle Maximus and um, gosh, I want to get it wrong. Oh, God, Blood of Gods. Um, and he is. I have, I have to give him credit for getting us on the Guar shows. Oh, cool. Um, he, he pulled some strings and. He's, they got Casey Orr back, the original bass player, or not the original Bishop Bishop. Kind of a long story with them. Right. But kind um of rotating cast. But yeah, Jameson was was very helpful um when he was in Guar getting us on their on shows with them. So that's cool. Very cool. He's in a band called Belushi Speedball now. Oh yeah, it's, I've heard they're of that. actually they're actually touring Europe right now. They're over in Europe. Yeah. They're playing a, a festival and maybe some other shows. Yeah, they were but, just uh, in Detroit, I think, not too long ago. Yeah, I think they played Sanctuary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have a crazy show. They throw all this stuff out on the crowd, <laughs> and they go wild, and <laughs> it's its own thing as well. It's right. quite a quite an experience <laughs> to see them. I'll have to check that yeah. out. <laughs> and buddies of mine, they're from here. They're doing really good. So cool. there's a lot of good bands here. Yeah. So you've got cool. uh, the little mini tour coming up. Uh, that's in August, right? First August, first, second, and third. We're um, we are playing uh, Kalamazoo again at the runoff, and then Lafayette. We're playing. Um, oh gosh, I can't remember the venue right now. We're playing Lafayette and then Louisville. Nice. And then we're gonna play uh, a little more in August. We got some other stuff in August going on, oh, on cool. our own. Excellent. So excellent. Be, and. Be and then you mentioned that you're, you guys are kind of working. I mean, you're always working on new music, and you like to do that just to, you know, keep fresh. So, um, yeah, you're about doing like an EP or something. I think we're gonna do like a five or Winter? six song EP. I've got some songs. Um, I've got this new one called "Born to Rot," and nice. it's um, <laughs> it's kind of more fast deicide, and then it kind of breaks down i don't know we're kind of mixing it up yeah i like to change the tempos up and um another one called destination isolation and uh, yeah we've got some we've got some good stuff in the works cool cool yeah. so um hopefully bust those out soon live i just want to make sure they're all ready to go yeah yeah but um yeah i want to you know I, I know i can't do it forever but i, I want to I want to release a little more music and and play and oh, you get, it, it's you, not over yet. Yeah, you're you're still a young man, dude. I'm, I'm I, 60. I feel like Come it, on. yeah. <laughs> right. As long as yeah, as long as um, as long as I can still do it and not sound like shit or something, you know. That's right. That's right. Um, and gosh, you're having I mean, fun, right? That's, a, that's and having a key, fun, right? Got a, some guys. Got... I mean, uh, like like I was listening to this, some cheesy as hell with Bon Jovi. And man, oh, some of these guys sound pretty rough these days. And I, I'm thinking, man, I don't want to like yeah. force yeah. it going out there if it's not going to sound good live. So yeah. I'm a little yeah. picky in that sense. I want to be powerful. I, I think that's know? the way to go, you know, just like go out at the top, but go as long as you can. Right. Right. That's exactly, Yeah. Right. True. So, true. I mean, there's definitely guys older than us out there doing it. So. Oh, yeah. I just I just saw Rob Helford. He sounds awesome. He's that's 70, what I'm hearing. He's 72 years old or something like that. That's like, great. Hitting all the high notes. Yeah, I was like, how did that guy keep his voice? Because that's what happens to a lot of those high singers. They, they you know, well, your vocal cords age like the rest of you, and it kind of, or you blow your vocals out because you, you know, tried to scream, you know, your testicles into your fucking chest. But uh, yeah, right. he sounded awesome. Fantastic. Good, good. You know, and like, I know Dave Mustaine, he had like some throat surgery, and I, I think he's having a little hard time singing. Yeah. And then I watched him, I was like, man, I, thought, I, just, I don't know if I'd want to do it and not be able to pull oh, I know. it off. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that would be tough yeah. is to be like that. It, yeah. Being able I mean, to. Here at Dave Mustaine's level, people are expecting. Yeah. Think they want to hear him, and Megadeth wants to tour, and they're they, the show goes on. But I know he's with his surgeries and cancer, throat cancer. I know it's it's a it's been a rough road yeah. for him. 
Yeah. So. Well, and we were just talking about Maiden. Uh, those dudes are well into their 60s, mid 60s. They, they sound yeah. It's good, they're awesome. It's better than ever. Yeah. 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 So yeah. See, there you go, dude. It's just yeah. you know, go as long as you can, as hard as you can, as long as you're having fun. Boom. That's true. You're good. Awesome. I'm with it. Yeah. Well, Brian, Brian, I want to thank you so much for being on Fans of Bands. I got one Thanks, last. Chad. Yeah, I got one last question okay. for you, and that is, okay. pineapple or no pineapple on pizza? On pizza? Oh, I got the dog barking here. <laughs> um, you know, I can, I can give or take it. I like pineapple, but <laughs> it's okay not to. I like what my wife's favorite is ham and pineapple. All right. So All right. we do eat, we do eat that. All right. Cool. But if I have to, I'll do half and and do sausage or something on the other half. Yeah. But nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Good well, stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks again for being on Fans with Bands. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Chuck. And I hope to see you in Kalamazoo if you get a chance. If not, yeah. it's okay. I'm gonna try to make it out there, man. Sweet. Thank All you right. for the opportunity here. All right, man. Take care. Appreciate it. Take care. See ya. See ya. Many thanks to Brian from Stonecutters for joining me on this episode of Fans with Bands. It was an absolute honor to talk with Brian about his career and his band Stonecutters. I've been a fan since seeing them first at Full Terror Assault back in 2016. Their monstrous riffs have kept me hooked and their latest album, Eye of the Skull, is a metal masterpiece. If you get a chance, check out Stonecutters' mini tour with Cavalcade and Mound Builders. They will be in Kalamazoo on August 1st. Lafayette, Indiana on August 2nd, and Louisville, Kentucky on August 3rd. Stay tuned to their website and socials for the latest news, and see the show notes for all the details and links. Bands are nothing without you, the fans. Purchasing music and merchandise is critical to their survival. If you can help out your favorite bands, please do. If you're in Michigan, consider following the Playing in Detroit area tonight and SE for Southeast Michigan Music Facebook pages. They are fantastic places for fans and bands to support each other and share our combined love of music. Thank you all so much for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast service to get each and every episode of Fans with Bands. Spread the word by rating the show, telling your friends, telling your neighbors, telling your family, telling your priest, tell everyone, and leave a comment. We want to hear what you think. You can keep in touch by following us on social media. This is a Life in Michigan production. Until next time, Be well and kick out the jam.